Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Travis. My dad over there, his name is Rick, and we're continuing work on this 60L Camino. In the last video, we took this gutted hull of a car and put a small block in it, put a turbo 350 in it, had a bunch of rear end problems with it. And in this video, uh, we still haven't got it running yet. We still have to shorten the drive shaft, do the brakes, actually wire up the motor and see if it does run. What we're working on right now is the brakes. See if you see that emergency brake pulling back there. A uh, little bit, try it. Like, nah, it's really not moving. Not at all? No. Serious? Yeah. Sure feels like it's doing something. Yeah, but the emergency brake ain't Did doing nothing. Did the cable move at all? Try it again, it's barely moving. That's all I want. No. Releasing? No. Ain't, it's not doing anything. Here, you push it. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, it's moving a little bit. Yeah. Pull that off. Do it again. Release. Press. Okay, release. Released. Try to pull it again. It's pulling it a little bit. Release. All right, well, I don't know. It looked like it was barely moving, so. All right, push it again. All right, release. And. So what we're going to do with the fronts, because the fronts have good enough shoes, we're just going to put wheel cylinders on them and leave the shoes on there and then uh, just put them back together. Yes, sir. But I am going to do the rear brakes in the meantime. So this already has a new wheel cylinder on it, and let's see how this goes. This goes like that. Alright, so the e-brake is on. There we go. Yeah. All right, back shoes are together. Now we'll adjust these brakes out as far as we can before we put the drum on. Then we'll adjust them out further to where they almost quit turning. There, it's dragging pretty good. Pretty good. So I got the front passenger side put together. I got the new brake hose on it. We're using the shoes because they're in good shape. Uh, put new cups and everything in the wheel cylinders. And uh, this brake's looking good. Lubed up the adjuster there. We should be good to start putting the tire back on it. Got to re-grease the bearings and take the old grease off and tore up that brake line. So we're just working through all that. You know what's crazy is this old cup right here that was in that wheel cylinder. It says Made in USA, Lockheed, Wagner, 
and you can squeeze it and it's not cracking it's not breaking or anything usually when rubber gets old you know it'll start to crack when you nothing and look at this air hose I bought this from Harbor Freight this isn't even a a year old look at this it's always been in the shade it's always been under this carport look at that you can take it off with your finger not even a year old not even been in the sun what a disgrace you know sort of like the tires we're getting from China that after about four or five years they just start disintegrating yeah rubber just starts coming apart this actually did come loose yeah I can't believe it here here Dad's taking the wheel cylinder off this side. Got to pound it out and rebuild it. And I'm going to take the master cylinder off because we're going to have to rebuild that one too. Got all the bearings soaking in gasoline. This one is rough. Good old screwdriver. Oop. The thing that really sucks about rebuilding these master cylinders is that they can only come out from this side when really it would be easier to pound it out just with a hammer. You can't. But on a master cylinder like this, this side comes apart and this side comes apart, so it doesn't matter how locked it is, you can beat it with a hammer. So being able to pull pull everything out this way is it's a lot harder. What we're gonna have to do because we can't hit it out the other way is literally thread tap this slide and then get it with a slide hammer. So we tapped it, got a half inch bolt. That's good, that's good, because as far as it's going to go, it's starting to come out. Just so you guys can get a look-see in there, it's pretty raunchy. So we're going to try our best to clean it up though.
So I got the master cylinder rebuilt. I was filming it, but then when I looked back at the camera, it shut off the, the heat, it got to it. You know, it just <clears throat> shuts off if the camera gets too hot. So it's rebuilt, it's ready to set on the car. Dad's greasing the wheel bearings right now. Got the brakes put together on both sides, wheel cylinders rebuilt. And um, we'll be able to get these hubs on, get the master cylinder on, and maybe we'll uh, be able to bleed the brakes today, hopefully. Do that, huh? Ain't supposed to do that. Do what? Not turn. It's not turning. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do that for? I don't. Know. You got the races in there and everything. <laughs> just. Hitting the uh, shoes? Yeah, now that don't bother me. There's no turning that was bothering me. Yeah, that was weird. Do you need a cotter pin? Yeah. Like, all right. Gonna put that dust cap on. <laughs> yep. Okay. Exactly. Is it on there good? I don't want to hear it flying off like a hubcap when you're going down the road. That ting ting noise. No, I'm not too interested in that noise. Like my brother, he was going down the road, going down the road, you know. And, well, his rotor was flat on one side. I seen. I said, Hey, what happened to your rotor? And he goes. Oh, he said, I was going down the road about 60 mile an hour, and he said, you know, he said, I seen this tire pass me. Dang, what, what is that, what's going on in it for that split second before the ink, the, the truck hit the ground, the tire went out of the, <laughs> went off, and he slammed on his brakes, and that rotor was on the pavement, and it flattened, it flattened the rotor. <laughs> But for that one split second, you know, I mean, you've got... You, there was a disconnect between what he was seeing and what he was about yeah, to... Yeah, it all happened within seconds, and the, but the tire went, whoo, it went on out. <laughs> you know, he, and then it, you figure out it's you. <laughs> you're it's, the problem. You're the problem, but the tire just, whoo, it left. And, and for that split second, then it hit the ground, and then he hit the brake, and it just flatten that rotor out on one side. Oh man. We got the master cylinder on there. I had dad go in there and hit it a few times. While I had fluid in there, we bled it on the cowl here. And now whenever we get ready, we can bleed the rest. I forgot, I don't know if we're gonna be able to bleed the brakes today because we broke a few lines. This one's broke twisted it off and then I think there's a line in the back that's broke so we're gonna have to fix those before we bleed them I forgot about that can I blame you yeah no okay no it wasn't me all right wasn't me either it was the third guy the third guy yeah the third guy it wasn't my fault <laughs> I will blame the third guy I don't know why they would use these bearings like this these ball bearings because they had cone bearings in the, that time. Well, that's what I was so impressed with with that Model A. That Model A, 1931, had taper bearings. That's the superior way. The ball bearing idea was, I don't like it. I don't like that ball bearing crap. They make a kit for these that you can switch them over to taper bearings. Well, look how nice that one. But I 
twisted this line off, I think I told you earlier. So we're making a few new brake lines. There's a busted one here and a busted one a couple down there. But I want to show you how we make our own brake lines. And I haven't done this actually in a really long time. I had to, I had to remember how to do it. So. so this is what we're aiming for. This is a double flared line. And obviously that metal flare right there, uh, when you tighten up the nut, there's, there's no rubber seal. The metal to metal is what seals it. Um, so we have to take this, that's just a line, it's flat, and we have to turn it into a flared fitting like that. You gotta tighten these ears real tight so that the brake line doesn't move in there. And you put uh, this side of the tool in the end. Basically, you just turn the tool in and smash it. Then you feel it bottom out. So now the line is, is smashed, flattened. But then to double flare it, you take the pointed end and you put it in there and this is what forms that face for the for it to ride on to seal actually they make a flaring tool quicker than that I mean, I like a hydro isn't it like a hydraulic yeah, pump or a, something it's a, it's a better setup I mean, this is yeah. very manual they have better ones now that are quicker dad's had this for probably 30 years the first time i learned how to flare brake lines i was 12 and i used this same tool it works, it just takes more time. So there you go, there's your, well it's a little bent, but there's your flared end. And also when you're bending these brake lines, you want to be real easy because if you bend them too hard, you'll kink them. And then you got nothing. I mean, there's, there's brake line benders for these. We'll see if that seals. So dad's up there adjusting the front brakes. I've already adjusted the rears. We had to make this brake line that goes to that junction. Had to make this brake line from this junction to the other wheel. We also had to make a brake line on the other side of that hose where it connects and runs all the way to the front. Had to make the whole thing. So from here, all the way to that junction in the back had to just shove a whole new line in there and we should be ready to bleed here in a few minutes pump it again i can feel it All right, I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm pretty sure we're good. All right, you getting the wear out of that one? Yeah, it's a pretty good stream. Good floor. All right. Good 
floor. Alright. Floor. Alright, you probably do it one more time. Okay. Floor. Yeah. I'd say that's good. Alright. Can you push it down harder? Well, I'm pushing it hard. Shouldn't take that much effort. Alright, well, yeah. Yeah, this one's bled. What? Now that these brakes are bled, I want to show you guys a few cool old gas pumps Dad and me got a hold of. So in my previous video, I did something a little different and I showed you guys some extracurriculars that dad and me get ourselves into and the extracurriculars was gas pumps. We like old gas pumps. I didn't know how it would blow over but a lot of people liked it. They thought the, You guys thought the gas pumps were cool and uh, it just so happens that we have a little more gas pump content to throw in here with this video. Uh, actually a lot of gas pump content. We bought uh, six visible Tokheim 620 gas pumps from a gentleman out in California who had a world-class collection. I mean, the dude had, um, I, I don't think there's a better gas pump collection in the world. I mean, the, the, the gas pump, gas station memorabilia you see sell at Barrett Jackson's pales in comparison to what this gentleman had. Been collecting for many decades, um, had, had pumps. I'll throw up some pictures. But we were able to get these six gas pumps off of him, plus a few other globes. So we're gonna get these gas pumps unloaded. We'll show them, I'll show them to you standing up and kind of what we're gonna do to them. All right, so now we're switching gears a little bit because I just got these in the mail. Like, they just came literally right now. And what these are are uh, replacement globes, aftermarket reproduction globes for the top. Because, well, one, I don't have them. Two, it makes them more sellable because it's branding. It looks cool. It's like statement piece, you know? And three, um, these are uh, plastic housings with glass lenses. You'll see when we put them together. Uh, it's kind of what makes the pump cool when they light up at night. And you can get originals, globes, but you know what happens is, is over the years, the globes are easy to take. So people take, people, I mean, these pumps are 100 years old. I mean, those globes were glass. Um, people took them, people shot them with BB guns or kids whatever with else. B kids with BB guns. Yeah, r rowdy kids with Little BB guns. Little kids, less, just like you. I never did nothing like that. They popped them with BB guns. I mean, it, they don't exist. And, well, they do exist, but uh, <laughs> they're in private collections. They're very expensive. They're hundreds of dollars. Even, you know, they can easily, an original milk glass globe with, with both sides of the branding can be thousands of dollars. So um, these globes are about $100, so that fits our style a little more. I mean, maybe if we had a pump that we personally wanted to keep, you know, and was our prized pump, we might get an original globe, but um, it doesn't really change the resale value, whether it's a repro globe or, or what. Humidity's up today. All the globes are assembled. We got a Mohawk Indian globe back there. Pretty cool looking globe. They're all cool. Two red hats, a gasoline, a Richfield, and a Marathon. I got two red hats because I'm gonna make these matching pumps. They look kind of similar. The ones on the right here, these two patina pumps. Um, put the same globe on top of them. Might be able to sell them as a matching pair. They look very, very similar, same patina. So these would go good together on each side of a building. 
and then that red one with the red top <clears throat> i'm probably going to put the gasoline globe on the red and white one so you these ones have been reskinned, and then they sell reproduction skins for ones that are too rusted or junked out so uh, two reproduction skins another reproduction skin and then i die uh, that's probably also a reproduction skin that's been primed uh, looks like it's been primed it's not bare metal so let's just start getting these unloaded we'll get them tipped up and then i'll show you a little more you know the pumps once we take the um the the blankets off of the glass We got the hoses and the handles for them too. We'll put that on. Give you the big picture here. Pump number one looks like we did not damage the glass cylinder. Um, that is really the key point to remember here is these cylinders are very important in regards to the value of a pump when you want to go to sell it. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but I want to get the globe on top to show you. And there's nothing to it really. Probably the easiest thing to possibly do to one of these pumps. Oh, there it is. You can see as we're standing next to it how massive they are. You know, we're both six foot tall, and this thing, I mean, we, we can't even reach the top of it. And I know if I do this, I can reach the top of the roof of my ceiling of my house, and that's eight foot. So this is a good nine, nine feet tall at least, standing here with the globe on it. It's a very, very nice pump. Even though it's not like painted and with the branding and Barrett Jackson auction quality, this is an extremely solid, good quality pump. The guy we bought this from did quality work to this thing and I'll show you what he did here and how it kind of relates to value. So most of the time you find these pumps, sometimes you can find them between $12, $15, $1,800, but what a big determiner of value is is how complete is the pump, how rare is the pump, and what condition is it in. Glass. Glass, yeah. <laughs> so these cylinders are always broke out. It, is it, it has all the correct handles. These are all, these are non-reproduction, these are tokheim brass handles they actually still work and again the glass is always broke out and you can buy aftermarket glass but it's not glass it's acrylic it is it's plastic and he went to the trouble to put and find a guy who sells real reproduction glass for these the cylinders alone are about eight nine hundred bucks if you want a real glass cylinder they're hard to get not a lot of people make them and they're about nine hundred bucks that's not even installing them and and the risk you take breaking them installing them plus they have all the pump markers the gallon markers there's one here and there's one here and there's one here so you can see the gallon markers are in it and what and if you look this this glass has never been out of here you see that i don't know what that is they used back in the day but it's a sealer it's it's like a cement of some sorts this glass has never been out. Okay. That's never been out. Some of these have reproduction glass and some of them have the original glass. I saw one did, but I didn't know if they, how many did. So this one is an original glass. And you, yeah, like dad was saying, you can see that cement there they used to hold it in because there was always gas at the bottom of these. They were always filled with gas. It has the top, he wired it for lights. All that stuff is usually gone. All the conduit piping and stuff in there is usually tore up. It's got all of its original Stampings, its original plates, Tokheim Oil Tank and Pump Company, model 620, Tokheim 620, that's where we're getting that from. Cut number, that's what it says. Cut number 620, says Tokheim Oil and Tank Co. serial number right there. Underwriters Laboratory inspected, uh, visible measure discharge for hazardous liquids. And this is a Vizi gauge, so you can see the flow of gas coming out of it. And what's cool about these is, they have the guts in them. 
So it's got the pump mechanism. See the wire going up there to light it up? And I don't know if this actually... I guess it's froze up, but that's not a big deal. The fact that it's there is cool. And this is interesting because usually the handles are on the outside, but the fact that these are on the inside is an odd system that... Uh, I've never had a pump that had the handle on the inside, but it's pretty neat though. So you close it up and it's all streamlined kind of. It's all just one big cylinder. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. They don't want you stealing gas. They can lock that door and you can't pump gas. Oh, smart thinking. I didn't think about that. Yeah, they all have the correct drain backs. So these right here, you you could you know open them up and and you could have gas drain back to the to the tank this goes just down to the tank to have all that on there you could leave this outside to flash rust and have a patina pump or you could easily easily paint this and put your own branding on it look, look at the glass it still says uh ray ray radiant radiant oh huh Fort smith Arkansas. Here, let me see. It still says it. Where the glass came from. It says radiant. O R, what's that say? Fort. Fort Smith, Arkansas. Smith, Arkansas. Wow, this is an original glass. And they put the cages around these back in the day to, to stop people from breaking them. They're called hail guards. Hail guards. Or little little kid guards. Mm -hmm. Let's see if she lights up. <laughs> looks good that's cool not all of them have those those cute little covers over the lights you know just like to hide them little hideaways in there but I like that yeah that's beautiful what a gorgeous pump awesome All the brakes are done now. We're ready to put the tires on, but before we put the tires on and set it on the ground and move on to something else, we have the drive shaft issue to deal with. And uh, what we got to do, because we're not, this is not the factory transmission, is we have to shorten the drive shaft. So we're gonna cut it and then re-weld the yoke onto the uh, the cut drive shaft.
peel off of there. Hold it in here and I'll hit that off. All the way in there, you want it, you want it enough to, you know, to where it can ch 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 go in and out. Plus it'll take up for any of your screw ups, you know. That'll give me that, that'll give me quite a bit of screw up room. see it you want a pen or something I got a pen I don't I'm, I'm prepared all right whatever you say very scientific it's in depth <laughs> very scientific measurement with a laser laser like laser perfect like laser perfect what do you think well if you think it's good let's cut her up yeah let's cut her up well, now that we got it marked dad uses a hose clamp puts it around there to kind of get a perfect circle and then he marks it. not past the ring yet. I know it. You got to go up because all it's going to, this, this is just hitting this. It's going to have to be centered again. It's not in the center. All right. Oops. A little bit more. All right. That's good. It's going to break now. Yeah. Turn it over and then see what, when you do it this way, And then once it starts getting even, then I'll put the, put the pin in. All right, stop. I was just gonna have you look on the floor, make sure it's flat there. See how that's not flat, see? Kind of hold it like that where it's flat. <laughs> now we're measuring it twice and three times and four times just to try and make sure that it's square on there. Okay, so you gotta hit it. Good, just as good as the factory welds. Mm -hmm. Nice. You have a couple of 9 16 bolts longer than that, or 3 8 I mean. Yeah. Oops. Them are just a hair bit short. Okay. 
Oh, you, you gotta want to start one here. No, that's in the wrong spot. That has to come back to here. So we got the drive shaft in. We got it bolted to the yoke on the rear end. Running up. We got the carrier bang bolted to the center of the X frame and we got it in the transmission. So now we can set the back of this down and um, we're going to run a vacuum line from the carb to the transmission. Vacuum line hooks right here and then it operates, you know, sh helps shift your shift points. All right, is that original? That's no, got to be original. Wow. So dad's under the car right now tightening up the torque converter bolts and we put a couple hoses on. We connected the vacuum on the back of the transmission for the gear shift and up to the manifold. Connected the uh, vacuum advance, PCV. Now what I'm going to do is tighten up this alternator belt and just keep working through the little details. We still got to put oil in it, tranny fluid, water in it. Actually, I'm sure this is just wishful thinking. <laughs> it's I mean, going to plug in and work? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's... It'll all work. Everything it's under the dash is fine. Uh -huh. I'm sure that all it's waiting for is for you to do that. I'm sure. And it's going to charge, all the lights will work. Well, it's not going to charge because it's not the... Uh... Oh, is this the harness for like the starter and everything? Or what is yeah. that? Oh. So we're getting closer to finally being able to start this thing. We got our fuel jug hooked up to the fuel pump. Uh, I put water in the radiator, although we do have a, a leak in the radiator. We can just deal with that for now. Uh, it does have clean oil in it. Uh, it's I put, got oil? It's got oil. Yeah, made Good. sure of it. Check twice. Good. Um, Good. Put a gallon of tranny fluid in it. I don't know you know how much is in the torque converter or not so if this thing runs we'll probably have to add more because the torque converter is going to suck up some you put rear uh differential fluid in it in the rear end didn't you yeah okay so we should be full of fluids other than the transmission but we won't know till we run that we got some battery cables made up dad made these up to the correct lengths to the starter and then the ground we got let's see we have our accelerator hooked up um have this line right here that goes to the accelerator pedal so got that now so we're looking good we're getting there we're getting real close you ready yeah. right, wait a minute I gotta think something goes crazy unplug that wire yeah Trying to make sure this is in the in the gas. Yeah, in you know, in the gas. Ow. Did you get shocked? No. That was a lot of hot air coming out of something. Hot air? Yeah. Hey, get... We got the El Camino running, not 100% because actually at the end of that day, I had to take a flight out with Emily to go to the East Coast to visit some family and take a little bit of a vacation. While we were over here, maybe some of you might recognize this house and maybe that Mustang and maybe the car that's inside this garage right here, but I hit up Chris, Jen, and Gus from No Nonsense Know How and I said, hey, I'm gonna be over in your guys' side of the pond. Uh, maybe you guys wanna hang out. Maybe we'll put something together and, and chill for a day or something. Because we all met 
last October at the duct tape drags and uh, I knew we'd be over in his side of the world someday and today is that day. Hey Gus. What are you doing? Saying hi to the Gus man. Wait, oh, so you have a shower out here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shower, yeah. do you just use this like whenever you're like super filthy from being outside? Yeah, pretty much. That's why I originally put it in. Yeah, but I actually there's a drain under there too. Oh. I, I under the rocks. Uh, it's plastic lined with a drain. I do prefer it. I like it. Uh, first thing I did when I moved in is I put that row of arborvitaes too, and these were little like little six footers, you know. I think they were about five foot, and now what are they like thirteen feet? I mean, look at these things. How long did it take for him to get like that? Uh. I'd say within five years they were they were pretty good height. Now they've slowed down. Oh, and you you put a mini split on your uh, yeah on no, your thing. How do you like that mini split? Oh, this thing's amazing. It heats it no problem, and in the winter it keeps the yeah like. So it heats free. it and cools it. Cause didn't you have like an oil heater in your other? Yeah, waste oil heater. Yeah. Do you like this better? Ah, oh, it's the best. Yeah. Huh. You know, and this has a drain around the whole thing too. Put like I pushed it down a little bit so. Put one more arborvitae in there. That'll take a little while to catch up. Interesting, because I've heard more people are like the mini split thing is getting more popular. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they're they're very efficient. And hmm. This was yeah. This I got a yard in Philly, and um, it was it was a no title kind of deal, a little risky of a buy, but yeah, I did did a few videos on the Chevelle, and I just kind of it's a beater cruiser rider. Uh, Pipes just sent me this full three inch stainless exhaust for it so i'm gonna throw that on actually a uh, local guy who watches the channel he was like hey i got these big uh, springs from a big block a body they should they should bring it up because this originally had a 250 in it so mm -hmm. throw those in and just kind of you know it's just a cruiser not a gem by any means yeah, where'd you get your two post lift did you buy this used yes yeah i got this used it's a 10k asymmetrical which i wouldn't recommend uh I always worked on symmetrical lifts and actually in ground symmetrical, but uh, I don't know. I don't like the asymmetric thing, so I've been putting cars on backwards anyway, and it's just. Uh, so what's the point of it being asymmetric? That means that means that those those posts are pointed like out, right? Yeah, yeah. So it rotate rotating the columns uh, causes the center imaginary center of gravity to uh, be more like here instead mm. of in between, and so the idea is when you pull a car, normally you're pulling onto the lift. Uh, you can open the doors easier, essentially, because you, mm. you're you're leaving much about 75 percent of the back out and 25 percent in the front. Just being a 10k, like man, when I put my my Ram on here, which is about 9,000 pounds, this thing is like I put support post jacks in to to supplement, but it still just feels like. Does it feel like a lot? Like I it's... feel like I'd rather have a 12 or 14k. Like I was used to the in ground lifts at at the shop I worked at, and uh -huh. these, these things were stout, man. I mean, they were rotaries, but it was just such a different animal. Like this this when it's up, I mean, it, you get a lot of rock on these posts, you know. Yeah. It's fine. You think about putting a lift in? Or? Yes. Um, I do want to put a lift in. I actually bought a lift off of uh, Facebook Marketplace okay. for a thousand bucks, but it's like an old school made in Arkansas. Um, uh, 10,000 pound lift, but it has chains instead of yes. cables. Yeah, that's normal. Honestly, a lot of the older lifts are better built, thicker. Yeah. They just overkilled them. Yeah. And as, like most things, as they got, uh, they wanted to save more money and the materials became more expensive, they were like, oh, they do the math. They're like, oh, we don't need to make it a half inch thick. You yeah. Know? Uh, and those chains, like, yeah, those things are way better than these little cables. I mean, it's it's nice to have this space over in my old garage for sure. You know, I can stack things much higher, and not that it's easy to get to everything, but whatever. You know, cram a lot more into a small space. Yeah, I know. You're like the the king of saving space and like organizing, putting everything in its holes. I gotta get this Mustang going soon, but that's not really a priority project. Oh, so. I saw that you um, did. Like you welded in, you had somebody weld in like a whole new undercarriage? Yeah, I put some money into this because uh, just the parts alone, like he did a whole rear section. That one piece alone, it's like three grand now for that. But yeah, new aprons, strut towers, uh, radiator support, and that whole like one piece underneath. And he, he did a fabulous job weld metal and brand new seats. And uh, yeah, I'm up here. Yeah. So she's, she's going to be stout now. Look at that. Yep. So not in a massive rush to get it done, but I definitely want to get it done probably, probably about a, within the month. I'd like to get some good, good, good cruising days out of this in the summer. 
So what are you planning on putting in this? I well, think I'm going to just slap that 289 back together, replace a few bad valves, rockers, uh, new gaskets, resealed up, new oil pan that's rotted through, and uh, bare minimum, just get it back with the three-speed in it. You felt this one was worth putting some money into? And I liked this story. It was, I believe it was the original owner, but he had all the original paperwork too, and this guy kept it in his shed forever and had plans to restore it, and he, he promised it to his girlfriend, this, this girl he was dating in his life at some point, and she got it, and she was like, what am I gonna do with this? This thing is a rotted piece of junk. So yeah, I, I don't know, something about the story just made me want to oh, put some. Oh, did you do the seats? Yeah, he, he did, yeah. Oh, brand man. New, brand new seats, yep. Dude, this thing's gonna be actually like really legit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, wow, this steel gets hot. It's nice having nothing to rot away on there, but whew, you're leading your arm on that. Oh, dude. Yeah, I feel like that's ridiculous. Yeah, it gets, it gets wicked hot. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna put a carpet in, man. Like, I, I'm not gonna put a headliner in. I don't want nowhere for the mice to go. I wanna just, I might even rhino line it or something like that. Some kind of liner and then, I don't know. It's not gonna be a beautiful car, but it's gonna be now the, my beater Mustang. Yeah. Now the patina on it, I, I like the patina. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people don't. They call really? It's just laziness, you know? Oh, yeah. You can't paint and it's laziness. For me, it's, I don't want to paint stuff because then I have to worry about it and I have to clean it and keep it under a cover. Dust gets on, it's like, oh no. That's what my dad says. He says, I don't want nothing painted no more because I don't want to babysit it. Yeah. You know, then you got to babysit it. So this right here, you could get in, you could drive, you got a good undercarriage, but nobody knows like nobody knows that it's that it's clean bean underneath and that it's, it's good. You could park it anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it gets hit with somebody's door, you're good to go. Yeah, I mean the body is surprisingly uh, pretty straight on it. Like I guess if it does deserve a paint job cuz it's like pretty straight, you know? Yeah. It would look good, but maybe one day when I have an interior space to keep it. Yeah. I still think it's cool like this. Like this is cool. Because you know what? There's two sides to the equation. There's uh, people say that it's lazy not to paint it, and then there's also the whole it's only original once. You can't pay to have that done too. No, well, so. I think this has been redone, like the quarters and stuff. You can see, some, like it, ha it definitely had a restoration at one point, but mm. probably in the 80s. Didn't you go get this Jeep with your rollback? No, that's a different Jeep. This one I got with the Tundra, and it had a tow bar on it, so I just drove it home like that, but. Had some good fun on it and then decided, it, it really, it's tough with some of these vehicles that you buy that are rough because it's like, once you, you dump the money and time into them, it's almost like, geez, you could have you could've just bought something nice yeah. you know, for a little bit more, but what's the funny of that? It, it, you know, you're not saving anything. But uh, this had a blown head gasket. It was blown, but still drivable. And then the uh, front pulley, the rubber went bad. So you can see how much that was digging into the cover there. Oh, yeah. Seals dry as it can be, rock hard. And put new rod bearings in it. Had my brother actually do that. Uh, he was like, hey, you got anything that I miss wrenching? I want to wrench on some stuff. Yeah, put some rod bearings in that. <laughs> so, just a, again, another beaver, man. This is like. Are you working on a video like the taking the head off? Are you putting a video together on that right now? No, or are you just no, doing it just to do doing it? Just doing it to do it, yeah. This so, thing's cool. Yeah, I have a title and keys for this too. When did you pick this up? This the thing's guy cool. He actually reached out to me, local guy on the a channel, and he's like, hey man, I got this bike that they just, my, my I think his family was cleaning out a house and they, uh, they already threw it in the dumpster. It was going to go to the dump. And he sent me a picture of this poor thing sitting in a, in a dumpster. He's like, if you can get it in the next day or two, it's yours. And I was like, yeah, well, I'll be there next, like tonight, dude. I'll come get it. Because he said a title and keys and everything, too. And I mean, come on, this side cover is probably worth 100 bucks alone. It's original yeah. stuff. Engine's locked up. Don't know why, but haven't got to it yet. That's like a winter project. You've never done a motorcycle on the channel, have you? Like a will it run on one? I yeah. I think so, no. When was the, how long have you had this car? When was the first time you put a video out on this? Uh, I guess it's probably at least a couple of years I've had this, yeah. Really? A couple of years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just kind of been hoarding it. Well, it, it took like over a year before I finally got a title for it. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I talked about this on the channel. Uh, I had Philadelphia Major Crimes call me and say, hey, we got a guy with a title for this car that, uh, you know, we got to talk. This guy says he stole his car. And, and I, I had... The people I got it from had court documentation for remo legal removal of it because the guy was like squatting on this factory property is the way it was told to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll paint the whole thing, I think. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. 
Just a little Here's bit. Here's today. Dang. Something new, always. <laughs> Never stops with these things. Each one of those. <laughs> Another one of your cars that did really well was that um that wagon, that Plymouth Fury wagon. Yes. What was up? What is up with that? Same deal with it. This came from the same yard. Uh, a guy that kind of just left those cars there and was keeping them there forever. And then I think he got ill, and you know taxes weren't being paid on that. Is the story I was told. I don't know, but uh, somebody who cleans up properties in Philly went in there and mm -hmm. legally applied for all the paperwork for removal of them and. Did you end up getting a title for that? Plymouth? Yes. Yeah. So I'll actually, I'll plug in uh, a great guy is uh, AAA Restorations, he's in Tennessee. I'm sure there's a bunch of people who do the title thing, but 300 bucks I think around there, and you essentially are doing like you're like selling the car to him, so if he was a scumbag, he could probably screw you out a really nice car. <laughs> but anyway, no, he's never screwed me and, and got me titles for everything I've ever needed, so AAA Restorations LLC. And he like helps people get titles. Yeah, yeah, he's just, he luckily lives, he, fortunate for him, he lives in a state where he can just get titles like it's nothing and he's turning into a business, so. One of my first jobs uh, working at a cycle shop, the guy, every time you needed like another bolt, he had three big five gallon buckets and there was all sorts of super useful things in them, even stingless all mixed in, wonderful hardware, but it was just like a joke. You had to dig through it or dump it out. It was such a waste of time. Yeah. I mean, this like, you need a 516 by 16 bolt, or no problem. Yeah, they're all mixed in together, but there's some kind of rhyme or reason here. Like, name another piece of hardware. Name something. A 3H shouldered nut. A shouldered nut? What do you mean by shouldered nut? Like, like it's got like a little shoulder, like a built-in, like a shoulder. Oh, on the oh, nut. you mean like a built-in washer? Right. So that would just be in the nut drawer, pretty much. Um, oh, I saw it already. I have specific, you know, I got my wing nuts. Like you were talking about like that? There you go. Okay, yeah. Like if you were talking about a shoulder bolt, I do have that in the miscellaneous bolt section. That is uh, right here. These are all my shouldered bolts. So like, you know, say timing cover bolt or something, anything that has, that's what I always call those. Is like, a, I guess a collared bolt. I don't uh, know five sixteenths, like carriage bolt. Five sixteenths carriage bolt, boom. You got it, buddy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, what else? Let's say you need it, I don't know. Rope ferrules, you know. I don't even know what that is. You got these uh, for, for wire rope. Oh. Okay, I've seen those before, but yeah, no, I didn't know what they were called. Nuts, headless set screws. It's, I guess it's like a hobby. The miscellaneous rubber and plastic. <laughs> it's like you just keep all the stuff, I don't know. And it comes in handy. I love it. It's the best. You're working on junk, and then you have junk to make junk better. It's good. But it was his headquarters the 8th to the 14th. Washington's headquarters. December 8th through the 14th, 1776, built in 1773 by Thomas Barkley, restored in 1931. Crazy. Well, right in the middle of the neighborhood, you know? So it's kind of cool. There was an elementary school right behind it forever. They just knocked that down a few years ago. Over there on that branch? Yeah. Wow. Look at that drop when he takes off. It's like the shortest hits the water. It's cool. That's cool. You see how the algae just sucks back in after? Yeah, yeah look at that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See those deer? No, I didn't. See them deer right there? Oh, there's a baby. Oh, yeah, look, come on. Aww. Ah. That's sweet. That's cool.